you're ready to make the leap and get a second monitor for editing your photos. I'm so excited. This is a game changer for so many people, especially if you've been editing on just like a laptop screen. To see your work big, to be able to get into those details like the trees and edit them, this is huge. So today I'm going to tell you what you need to know about buying a new monitor, specifically for photo editing. I want to preface this with saying that I am talking to people who want to edit their photos and print their photos. I'm going to tell you some things today that are going to be counterintuitive that other people are going to have given you much more different advice. The reason for that is I believe in printing photos. I have been printing photos since I went to university and was working in a dark room every day. The power of seeing your image printed and big on a wall you just cannot underestimate that. So everything that I do in my editing, yeah, you've probably uh, mostly just seen my photos on your computer or on your phone screen, but my editing process is editing for print because that's where my images look the best. And I want people to see my images big and printed on their walls because that's when they're gonna get the most impact. Let's dive in to the things that we need to know when we're buying a new monitor. We're gonna talk size, resolution, color, and the type of monitor to be buying. First, what size? Bigger, bigger is better, right? Right. I like 27 inches. So I'm editing at my desk. A 27 inch screen lets me see everything without having to back up. And if I need to back up to see everything, I can't reach my stuff. Not super useful. So 27 inches is the sweet spot for me for having a screen on my desk. Any bigger than that, it's nice to look at if like it's an immersive experience, like maybe gaming or watching something, but it's not useful for editing. So 27 inches. Following on the heels of that is what resolution? And this is where what I'm going to tell you is probably quite different than what someone else has told you. I use 2K or what's referred to as QHD, 2,560 pixels, by 1,440 pixels. So 2560 by 1440. That is the sweet spot for the resolution at a 27 inch screen. Yes, you're probably like, wait, she didn't just tell me to get a 4K or a 5K or an 8K monitor because that's what marketing wants you to get, right? And I get it. 8K is beautiful. On screen, oh my gosh, it's stunning. But did you notice I said on screen? If you edit something on an 8K screen and then print it out, it's probably not gonna look as good. And here's the reason for that. It's pixel density. Because if your physical screen size is the same, it's that 27 inch screen, and now instead of having 2000 pixels in it, you have 8000 pixels in it. The pixels when there's 8000 are a lot smaller. And Let's just think about this for a moment. Has anyone here taken a picture before, whether it was of the Milky Way or of just anything, and you looked on the back of your camera screen and you were like, oh my gosh, this looks so good. And then you came home, you plugged in your car, you downloaded it, and you put it up on the screen and you're like, it's out of focus. This looks terrible. Because when things are smaller, things look better. So by having denser pixels on an 8K screen or a 4K or a 5K screen, it's going to look really, really good. But when you print it, it's not going to look great. And the sweet spot in my experience is to have a pixel density of around 100 to 110. So QHD 2K on a 27 inch monitor gives you that. That's why it's my recommendation. If you really want a 4K or an 8K screen, I would recommend getting a much larger screen. And then you would work with your image on a smaller portion of the screen. Not super practical to have big, big ass uh, monitor on your desk though. So that's the reason I go with a 27 inch. 27 inch 2K, color, color space. You have to do some digging here. And this is why I've actually listed out some monitors that I recommend. And you can see the link to that page below because most monitors are gonna give you a color space of sRGB or part of sRGB. And sRGB is the color space of the internet. 
That is the default color space for everything that goes on the internet and for everyone's screens. But sRGB only has a fraction of printable colors. So I want you to be working on a screen that can actually show you the colors that can be printed. Because when you're working on an sRGB screen, you can't see certain colors on the screen that are going to exist in the print. And then you're looking on screen and you're looking in print and you're like, why in the heck is everything different? So you want to get a monitor that covers the Adobe RGB spectrum, or at least some of it. And on that note, it should be a 10-bit monitor as well. So these are going to be more expensive. To get a monitor that gives you Adobe RGB coverage and 10 bits, they're more expensive, but that gives you the best color representation on screen. The last thing is the type of monitor. So pretty much we're going to be getting an LCD. Um, but what kind of LCD? Because there are different kinds. We want what's called IPS or in-plane switching. And there are other names for this. Different brands use lots of different names because they like to confuse us. But it will say something about plane or plane switching in it. And the reason we want this is because with an IPS monitor, you can look at that monitor from any angle and it looks the same. There are other monitors like a TN monitor that are a lot cheaper, but if you look at it from above or below, the colors are going to shift and invert. You don't want that. You want your monitor to have the same color, the same luminance value when looking at it from all angles. So make sure when you're looking at a monitor that you get one that has IPS technology, so in-plane switching. A couple last things to look at. How does a monitor actually connect to your computer? So you're going to want, if you're on a Windows, um, to have DisplayPort on a Mac, it's Thunderbolt, or you want HDMI. So for 2K, you need HDMI 1.4. If you're gonna go more than 2K, then you want like HDMI 2.0. The reason for this is the data is being sent through that cord. If it is just like a skinny little USB cord, the data can't fit in that. Think of the data as this physical size and your cord, depending on the capacity that it has, is not actually gonna be sending all of the data. So most professional monitors are gonna have something like HDMI or Thunderbolt or DisplayPort as the connection. If it says USB as a connection, you don't want that. The other things to think about, is it tiltable? Is it adjustable? That's kind of something that's nice to have. Can you adjust the height on it? Can it tilt? Some of them even swivel to be vertical um, versus horizontal, which is a pretty cool thing as well. And then the last thing, I like a flat screen. There are people out there who love their curved screens. I find it difficult to judge distortion on a curved screen. I'm not gonna lie. I've used them. I've had curved screens this big and they curve around. They're fun. But when I'm actually trying to look at the image for what it will look like in a print, well, you can see how looking at something curved doesn't make sense for something that's gonna end up flat. So my personal preference is a flat screen versus a curved screen. All right, that's my take on monitors. I know it's a little bit different than what a lot of people gear towards, but I like printing stuff and I want you to print your stuff. Have any questions, pop them in the comments down below. You buy one, let me know. And of course, there's a link to the page where I link to the different monitors that I recommend.